Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. This is episode zero of my new series on beginning C++ game development with C++ 20. Now, I did a series of Twitter polls a while back where I asked my Twitter followers what should be the next direction for C++ Weekly, and I proposed several questions, and it was chosen through a series of polls that I should begin a new project from scratch that is real-world C++ to some extent. Um, game application library tied almost exactly, so I put forth a, another poll that said, should it be a new scripting language? This is my my library idea, an RPG adventure, top-down game, which would be a game, um, or a simple spreadsheet implementation, which would be my new application from scratch. And there was also a comment from Jan Vilman about helping him with debug.vision, which is a tool that he has been working on. So a top-down RPG adventure won, and it was decided that it should target C++20. And it was overwhelmingly decided that Linux is the most important operating system for me to target. Keyboard is our most important input device, although we will support these other things. And uh, then I got this winning poll with QT in here, which surprised me. So I did a follow-up poll um, and asked, should I use QT with widgets, QT with MGUI? Now, these two combined was only 23% of the poll. And now I don't know if people who are responding at this point didn't realize that I was working on a game at this point, and they were just choosing a UI instead of paying attention to the previous tweets. Um, and then we ended up with basically SDL with MGUI being the leader, followed closely by SFML with MGUI, and um, a slight lead that I should use Dear MGUI, or instead of rolling my own immediate mode GUI interface. So we'll discuss some of these uh, topics, and we'll go over in this episode what exactly the plan is. So I need to make one thing perfectly clear. I am not a game developer. So I am not going to be able to give you the best practices for how industry does game development kind of things. This is going to be an experiment and a process with all of us together on the channel. I'm going to be using a combination of NeoVim, which we see here, and um, Sea Lion. Now, Sea Lion is not a sponsor of this YouTube channel, of this, or of this video series. If you see an ad at this point for Sea Lion, it's because they have paid for an ad on YouTube and it coincidentally pay, played here. So I'm using Sea Lion because it is a tool that I have become familiar with recently, and I will show you why I would like to use it for this particular game project in the following episodes. Now, sticking true to how I teach and speak at conferences, my main focus is going to be on C++ best practices. I want to keep this project as clean as possible, and I want to show how you can write code that uh, you know actually compiles with no warnings and um, follows best practices and, and, and uses all the tools available and that kind of thing. And that's something that we'll mention a little bit more in the next episode. We're going to use C20 as much as possible. Now, the time of the recording of this episode, which is February 23rd, 2020, the C20 final committee draft has just been approved, and they are waiting for final sign off to actually make a the actual C20 standard. So we're not going to be able to use 100% of C20 because no compiler supports that at this point. Um, and we'll discuss again in a later episode exactly which parts of C20 we will be able to use. So again, this is all going to be from my perspective of best practices with C++. Now, let's just take a quick look at my particular development environment that I'm going to be using. So I am in Arc Linux, 
and I've got GCC 9.2, Kling 9.0 installed in user bin. These were installed by my distribution. So my uh, LSB release uh, points out that this is Monjero Linux, which is a sub-distribution of Arc Linux, but I have access to a lot of the latest and greatest tools. So, for example, having access to CMake 3.16 is pretty easy with Arc Linux. And, well, if we're going to be targeting C++20, a standard that hasn't been released yet, then I'm going to have to be living right on the cutting edge of these things. I also have installed for myself um, a couple of... GCC, let's see, this was last updated about three months ago. That will get updated again at some point in the future. And Clang 10.0, which is from whatever SHA this is. So I will be also running my own less locally built, custom built versions of GCC and Clang, again, to be able to get the latest and greatest C++ 20 features possible. Now, coming back to here, the overall plan is episode zero is the, is this episode. This is the plan. And then episode one will be getting started, which will show us how to actually set up our C++ project, or at least how I will be setting up my C++ project, and you can follow along at home if you want to. Episode two is going to be a discussion of C++ 20 so far. So this is what features of C++ 20 we'll actually be able to take advantage of at this point in the game while we're working on this. In episode three, I will be uh, I'm going to start with SFML and then later port that to SDL. We'll, we'll see about that in a minute. So I'm going to be reading SFML input states and displaying them. Just call that reading SFML input states. And then episode four will be managing the game engine state. So we'll be talking about things like the state of the actual gameplay and how we will serialize and deserialize state and save and uh, load things and setting up some tests for for managing our game state now since this is again i'm coming from the standpoint of best practices in episode five I'm going to talk about how to make our game engine testable. And I've got some pretty good ideas for this, I think, and hopefully they'll play out well. Now I'm going to then talk about making the game state allocator aware uh, on episode six. So this will give us the ability to make our uh, game state uh, theoretically much more efficient by reducing the number of dynamic allocations that we are doing and increasing the locality of all of the game state. Episode 7, I'm going to add I'm going to add logging to our game engine. Then episode 8, we will actually draw a game map So uh, remember, this is a 2D top-down RPG adventure style that we are aiming for. Episode 9, we will develop a dialogue tree. And then in episode 10, we're going to port the game engine from SFML to SDL. Now at this exact point, we will have a game where we can do some interaction moving around the uh, game map 
and we will be able to know exactly what we need for drawing tiles and that kind of thing. So we should know exactly what we actually need from our game engine at this point and what pieces of SFML we are using. And then that I think will actually make moving to SDL easier because then we won't have to have uh, just guessed like what layer of level of abstraction that we need and that kind of thing because we'll already know what we're doing. Now the actual game uh, and if you don't mind, I'm going to draw right here on top of this screen is again a top down 2D adventure RPG. So this is our game window and you'll see my absolutely amazing artistic skills at this point here and you'll know what to expect from the actual game moving forward. So this is our map. This is going to have, you know, some sort of, I don't know, river running through it with like a bridge or something like that that we can cross over and we'll have some sort of an NPC here and we'll have our player character here and this is probably the level of graphics again that you should expect from them and then we will have a couple of dialogue boxes excuse me diagnostic boxes so we'll have diags here which is showing us the current state of the game engine and we're going to use mgui for that and then we'll have something like um, something that shows us our input state input state and that will have maybe some sort of a game controller or something to show us which buttons are currently being pressed that just looks like a very sad game controller something like this and then we will also have the ability to walk around the game engine and interact with our NPC. And when we do, we will get a dialog box here that gives us some sort of dialog tree where we can have a conversation with our NPC. This is where I expect to be on approximately episode 9 right here. And then episode 10, we'll be doing some code cleanup and hopefully reducing some of our technical debt that we accrued over the first nine episodes. I expect overall that the total source code here is going to be actually pretty small from my experience so far working with these tools, but that's what we're going to expect to see in the next 10 episodes after this. Now, some of these things are going to be more informative than live coding, so, um, well, that's how things are going to go. And I won't be using Compiler Explorer, which I normally do on my YouTube channel. And instead, like I said, we'll be using C-Lion. So I think that covers everything. So uh, thank you for watching this zeroth episode of my new game development series. And I hope you enjoy this journey with me. Be sure to subscribe.